People like Gary Vee and Grant Cardone and Dan Locke tell you all the time that you need to create content. But how can you do it without a team like them to support you? Guess what? I'm gonna show you. Alright guys, so you're probably now wondering, Laura, how do I become a content creation machine like Gary Vee, Grant Cardone, Dan Log, Jason Capital, and all those like big names that you hear on social media, right? So today, I brought my amazing friend, Angel Anderson, and he's not only my amazing friend, he's also like the best content distribution expert, content creation expert, content management expert, anything that has to do with content and building out a plan, he's the man. And we're gonna show you exactly how to be a content creating machine without a team. Let's go. Alright guys, this is the homie, Angel Anderson. Go follow and like and all that stuff with the notification bell. Um, not only on this channel, but on his channel too. <laughs> Thank you. Alright man, so tell me, how can I be a one-man gang and be this huge content creating machine with no team? Okay, so, to answer that question the right way, why you want to create content and you know, that to a level that you might need a team. Now, yes, it's doable without a team, but Get clear why you want to get create content because creating for the sake of creating, that is going nowhere. Like that's why you see people with lack of time or not productive because they're sharing con content. But is that content really helping you get closer to the goal? Now I'm to the point right now that if I don't have nothing to say that will help my client but also help them business, I will not share it. I see Laura all the time. You share valuable content, not you, but like people. People yeah. share valuable content. I always share valuable content. Share valuable content. But the question is. So this is the second part to the question. Are you starving your business to death because the content that you're sharing is valuable to your audience but not valuable to your business? Ooh, that's good, that's hot, I like that, I so, like that. So here is, so the, the main two people we met, you mentioned, they create content daily. Now, Grant Cardone, it seems that they plan, he plans more, his team plans more. Yeah, Gary Vee is more with the mindset of create, documenting versus creation. And there is a big hole in this strategy, in the hole that we just mentioned. You, are you creating for the sake of being consistent or creating or are you creating something and sharing something that or documenting something that is actually going to help the audience and help your business if not it's going to help your audience and then eventually you won't be able to help them because you're running out of cash now both facts yeah. facts yeah. i've met so many people that tell me hey i can't afford this 50 dollar service or this tool because I, I'm, I'm broke and it's that they're active they're jumping from networking event to networking event or they're creating content all the time but their content is not helping their business and at the end of the day when you're in the airline the plane is going down they tell you you put your mask first yes. and then help somebody else so if you're sharing I, i'm not saying don't help your audience what i'm saying is be more intentional that's what i like about you you're intentional both, both, both of them, they have Facebook shows. So, yeah, Facebook watch, Facebook show, but that's something that you can put in the schedule, something that you can do weekly. Even if you pre-record it on a Saturday and you record the whole month, you do four shows, but you, something that you can batch, Facebook shows. They both up, uh, post on Instagram, and Laura, you said like up to six times? Like six times a day. I probably see Grant Cardone on my feed like at least six times. Gary definitely, like he stays putting up Instagram stories all the time, at least 12 Instagram stories. Twitter? YouTube. Twitter, at least 12 tweets a day. Um, YouTube, I know they do at least one video a day. The reason I added video when Laura suggested is, is to show you there are other distribution platforms besides the big three. Besides Twitter, Insta, actually Google Plus shut down yesterday. Yeah, Google, Google Plus, Plus shut, shut down, down forever. Yes. And then and besides- It was a shitty platform. <laughs> besides Facebook and, and LinkedIn. We left LinkedIn, but I believe Oh, they, both, they both both on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. So how can you create content? Here's what I would suggest you start, especially even if you have experience. What I would suggest you start is by creating content for the platform that you are doubling down, that your clients are in the most. Yes, ideally you want to create content for each platform independently. However, if you don't have a team and you're lacking in time and you want to create something, pick the ratio, the size for the platform that you are putting the most time or people are finding you the most. So for example, in my case is Facebook. But what I do is I create content for YouTube and this is why. So I create the long form content for YouTube and this is what I would suggest. Long form content for YouTube and then the smallest, the one, one while you're editing, you want to extract the one liners, the two liners, the small clips that you can distribute in the other platform. So the big piece of content, 
if you, especially if you're lacking on time, what I mean big piece of content, you're doing a training, you're doing a speaking engagement, those you most record at all time. You're doing a consulting, if you can share that information, if not, don't share it. You know, all those long conversations that you're having with people, you grab them and you put them on YouTube because YouTube is a search engine, that's what people are finding. That's the, whether you want to call it search engine optimization strategy or you want to call it your Google strategy or you want to call it your YouTube strategy, but the whole idea is that when people are searching for something, they can find you. Right, so for me personally, I've gotten like a big percentage of clients from Instagram and YouTube. Okay. No Facebook, um, not that I know of at least. But like I, I have my case studies that rank for that specific niche and um, talking about the specific service and like lead generation, right? And then they funnel their way through that because I have the link to my actual case study. They go to my case study and then they will call. So that for that one, I will pick the ratio that works for both and upload. Well, well the case study's super long, so I wouldn't even go on Instagram. And I would never put it on Instagram, but what I did with Instagram is just take a picture of the title and then I posted that and then put the keywords in there and distribute it out to where But assuming that you have time just to create one piece of content a day. Like mm -hmm. so assuming that you don't have a team, you and you have other stuff to do, you have other responsibility. So you gotta pick and choose. What platform do you wanna create? Let's say I would do YouTube all day. So I would do YouTube. So me personally, the way I see it and the way I see it being done yeah. is they if you wanna do it without a team, you'd have to sit down like for a day and just create three months worth of content for like if it takes eight hours just do it if you have to change your shirt multiple times just do it and then put it out in a, in a calendar and drop everything every day. I agree with that strategy 100% that's one of the best things that you can do bash your time assuming that you can just you don't, you don't have time right now to bash it and you can create one for what platform you will create it because right now you so you said you for me it would be YouTube because it can rank but for what, me but why why not Instagram because you're getting most of your clients through Insta, right? Yeah, but YouTube gets me ranking on the search Got engine. It. So I'm indoctrinated. Like, I already know I can indoctrinate the people on my Instagram. Got you it. feel me? Yeah. This is people that don't know me that are getting indoctrinated to that and then leading to Instagram. So it not only leads to an appointment, but it leads to the funnel of like my personal brand. Let's, do, let's go over to those two scenarios real quick. Assuming that you can only create for Instagram, then I, what I would suggest is to pick the ratio, meaning the size of the video or the image that will work best for Facebook as well and other and other places that you don't have to manipulate too much as far as size right. and then just create one piece of content it might be a minute long and just upload it to uh, Instagram and share that through other platforms because one minute you can upload it on Facebook you can upload it on Twitter you can upload it on LinkedIn right. and you can repurpose that content multiple times assuming that that's the case but however if you're going to tackle the the video the way that Laura said great strategy uh, so create it for YouTube and then if you plan it, then you know which section of that video you can reach share in other places. If they want to watch the long form, they can go and watch it on YouTube. But the small pieces of content, Twitter, Instagram, by the way, they do have a limit, a time limit. So the only one that don't have a time limit right now is YouTube and uh, Facebook. You can upload, us, I think 10 hours on Facebook and 10 hours on up to 10 hours on, on YouTube if I'm not okay. I think that's the limit, but. I don't know, I don't recommend that. <laughs> um, I, I honestly try to make my videos less than six minutes, and like even lately, I've had videos go up to 20 minutes, and that's like a lot. Like I don't think people are consuming that. But that's a good, that's a good, that's a good point to bring up now. One thing that you wanna put in your, in your schedule is 15 to 20 minutes, once a month, or however frequent you want it, and look at your analytics for the videos, and yeah. see what is the watch time, and see if people are, you can average the amount of time that people are watching your videos, and then that, that could be a magical formula for you to make videos that is that time, so before you have the, the big drop in, in minutes. Yeah. So if you, but, like if you, but if you don't look, so now, going to the medium, another thing that you can do frequent is, to have a calendar reminder to add a new distribution platform to your strategy. And the idea is not is for you right now not to spend more time in a new platform, but for example, let's say that we create this video that we're creating right now. We upload it to YouTube, right? She snags some things and put it on Instagram. What if she pays for a transcription and upload the transcription on, on, on Medium? You Basically, you copy and paste the link of the, of the YouTube video into a service like rev.com and they give you a Word document with the and you copy and paste it, and you format it, and you spend probably like two, three minutes formatting it, and you can duplicate or do a version of that article in LinkedIn articles, and, and you can repurpose that content. I love that, I really love that, because like, you're already saying so much, like, this is this is a tutorial, pretty much. Yes. Why not have it on a blog post and help your SEO out? Uh, and now that Laura said the blog post, ideally you wanna publish it in your website first. However, some content might be suitable, it might be, Maybe you just want to upload it on LinkedIn, but if the video is good, 
definitely upload on your website for the ranking purposes so people can find you. And then parts of that article or tips or you know a version you can upload it on medium a different version you can upload it on linkedin articles and you can repurpose that content multiple ways remember that from a video you can extract images and you right. can and i use those images on linkedin all the time uh, on on instagram all the time the small the, the long video goes on youtube the small one goes on instagram and facebook and then the transcription will go definitely on my website or in other platform and you can automate that yes totally so here's the one Philippines. <laughs> here's one quick automation For, because the automation is kind of cheap, but it's not a team. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. It's not a team. So, you you have to link your YouTube account with a software with a service like Rev, R E V dot com. There are other ones out there, but you can link them. So the idea is that once you upload a content, and you can let's say you can put a specific tag or a specific word in the description, like transcribe or whatever words you want, Red will pick it up through SAPI or IFTTP, whatever you want, and will automatically grab that video, transcribe it, and then you use another automation to when Rev is done, post it as a draft in your Word in your WordPress Power website. And it's and it's that you have a draft a draft article. Besides that, the only thing you have to do is is he edit it, he publish, and what is he's publish? Get Grammarly, guys. Yes, I just got put on to that. Get Grammarly, and it'll help you with the editing process. One hundred percent. And it's automation, technically. You know. And once it's <laughs> published, then you're gonna have a you have different automations for. So once it's published, you can have a IFTTP or a Savior that goes. It will publish to Facebook, Twitter, and the other social medias immediately. And then you have another. Uh, running the same automation that will post to just Twitter like two hours later and then repost every place else tomorrow and then you can have a year follow up automation to reshare the content because you can't just publish it and hope that people will come. You have right. to share that multiple times and you can get creative. You can duplicate your current sharing strategy but to our automation. Now where this gets tricky is that eventually your title will look the same Kind of, for example, new video or new blog post in the title and then the title of the website. Because it, I like to add emojis. Yes. Emojis change the game for me. 100%. Because it, it, it attracts that attention, you know? So this one is come up with like 12, identify, you know, have you watched this video, title of the video? Because the automation will pull the title of the video or the blog post, but the, the initial part, so it's not duplicate content, you have to add someone, you know? Just a reminder, just in case you haven't watched, have you watched tip number three or blah, 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 and you go from there. But that's how you can create content without a team. What did I miss? Um, emails. Emails. Emails, huge. If you have a list and if you don't have a list, you're doing something wrong yes. and you need to go start building your CRM right now. Yes. So email should be part of your distribution strategy. I get, I get emails from Greg Cardone. I don't get emails from Gary Vee. I don't think he's building out his list. I know he just started his chatbot, and I don't think he's doing it right. Uh, text messages. Yeah, they're all, so he's Mr. Jab, Jab, Right Hook. He he right hooks every single text. <laughs> like, I, I've now, I did a test to see okay. if it was a, a fake, and somebody replied back to me for my birthday. I got a text, happy birthday. I'm like, who's, you know, it's you guys. You know, somebody else from his team that monitoring the, the email text. But, so email. So here is one thing that you should be doing. I would suggest to upload a video first on YouTube, and the second step will be publishing on your website. Once you hit publish, if you link your RSS feed to your email platform, whether it's AWeber or MailChimp, doesn't matter, they can all automatically broadcast your new blog post to your RSS feed. So you can automate it. But if not, if you don't want to automate that part, just add a blur, put the title of the video, link of the video, and click send. But definitely, definitely, definitely use email. Definitely, and also chatbot messengers for Facebook. It's it's email in 1997, okay? <laughs> Open rates are 97% for some of my clients, and it's ridiculous, okay? Their, their like regular email is probably anywhere from like 10 to 20% open rate, and Messenger just blows it all out of the water, guys. It's ridiculous, and we send out offers. People open it and come in and claim whatever the offer is. Here's what I like about chatbots, Facebook chatbots. You can tag people. So if Laura click on the survey say yes, I can filter out who said yes in this survey and I can just re-engage or do a follow-up sequence for that one. And chatbots are amazing. Yeah. Uh, but the reason I added the RSS feed is because I want to direct all my traffic to my website. I don't want to direct inbound traffic to YouTube or Facebook because that's not my platform. That's not my home. That's not my business. Where I can control is my website. Right. That's why I say RSS feed to yeah, email. After you embed the video, 
into your website. Right. Yeah. So when we do chatbots, we collect email. So always build your list always. or your own list, like your email list, because that's the only baby you yes. really have. Everything else is owned by other people. You don't own Facebook. You don't own YouTube. You don't own Instagram. You don't own any of the platforms except for your emails. And if in the event, Laura has a great point. In the event that you get shut down, you gotta restart from scratch, which it happens quite often. Alex Jones got like completely banned yeah. from like everything. The only thing that you will have is your email list. Right. That's it. And if you can, if you have a solid email list, if you create, took the time to create a relationship. Once you hit send, hey, I'm starting here. A good chunk of those people will come, and you can restart your business. Yeah. And I've seen people getting Facebook accounts shut down. That are not, oh, yeah. that are not Alex Jones. That are older people. Yeah. Yes. Because they're they're like probably going against the terms of service. I've seen a lot of people going against the terms of service get shut down. Sending mass emails and, and spam. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, it's like using um, paid Facebook groups, and that's against their terms of service. Oh. Yeah. Mm. And they're making a lot of money. Like yeah. they're making like a million, over a million dollars a year off of Facebook groups, yes. and just shut down. But they're good thing that they're collecting emails yes. because as soon as they open their account back up again, they start getting more friend requests and everything. So just to recap, definitely create the content for the platform that you want. Oh, my suggestion: if you're going to use YouTube, upload it to YouTube first, then embed it in your website. Pay for a transcription. That way, you don't have to spend time transcribing. Copy and paste a blurb on, of that transcription into your website. Use a, the remaining blur for social media and, and other mediums like Insta, like LinkedIn, articles, and medium. But you already created, so basically what you're doing is copying and pasting and revamping the title. Once you is published in your website, the automation should pick in to distribute that content in social media. That way you don't have to do it. It will save you 15, 20 minutes, but every day, at the end of the day, at the end of the week, it's an hour. Yeah. And then you, that's an hour for exercise, and that's what you're coming. Yeah. And then, and then once you uh, publish it, then your email software should create it. And whether you decide to blast it automatically or have it as a draft, that's it's really up to you. But I will have to send the email as a distribution, and then definitely run uh, a six months to a year or to twelve months uh, automation campaign for the content. And after you share the first month, then it's once a month the content after that. Yeah. And the other ones is depending if you use them or not. So guys, I hope you learned something amazing here because this is literally the framework and systems and processes that you need to set up in your business to be a content creating machine like Gary Vaynerchuk, Grant Cardone, Dan Locke, and all those big names out there. You can be that big name too. And doing it all without a team. All right guys, latest.